Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I'm in Sweden by the distillery MacMurra, and today I have something called EFA, E-F-V-A. Now we're talking about the jewelry designer, Eva Atling. She was at the distillery in Sweden, she is Swedish. And she did the tour. She went down in the mine where they actually store the barrels 50 meters below um, the surface of the earth. And then Eva and Angela de Orazio, de, de Orazio um, picked out 19 casks. Some of them were 30 liters. Some of them were 200 liters. Basically, they looked for American oak. And the very, very important thing about this was these casks were actually saturated beforehand in Burke wine. Burke wine? What's that? All right, so I know a Burke tree, but I have no idea what Burke wine is. Well, to be very, very honest, I didn't know what cherry wine was until I actually tasted the Bloomstead from uh, McMurray and fell in love with it. So they have some Burke wine, they have some cherry wine, they have some um, Odoloso wine casks in here. 46.3%, whiskey base number 118372, 4,111 bottles worldwide, and 480 of those bottles actually made their way to Germany. Over here in Germany, this costs between 110 and 120 euros, so about $150. I think that's a little pricey, to be honest. And um, if you look, you can see in this picture a silver cork. This silver cork was designed by this jewelry designer, Ava Atling, and it's an interesting M. It's silver, I don't think it's chrome. And the M could either mean the, mean the moment, which is the name of that special bottling series from McMurra. A couple times a year they bring out these interesting bottles. They always look like this at the moment. Or it just might mean McMurra. You don't know. All right. So what I didn't know until I started researching for this video is um, that 1998, eight guys got together in Sweden. They were drinking Scotch whiskey and they were like, hey, why don't we have Swedish whiskey? And then they said, well, let's make it ourselves. And so they got, they got together. 1999, they actually had the first whiskey produced, or at least the first spirit was produced from a very rudimentary type of still, maybe a little bit black market. I'm not sure about that. But they finally got the money together. In 2002, they built their first McMurray distillery which produces up to 600,000 bottles a year. It has one single pot still in it from four sites from Edinburgh, and it's a very, very interesting constellation. Now, they found out fairly soon, whoops, that's not enough. Swedish and also Germans and Europeans like a Swedish wine, a Swedish whis whiskies, and so they decided to make their second distillery about 10 kilometers east of that place. The place of the village was MacMurra, and so they in 2011 opened up their Gravity Distillery, which can produce 1.8 million bottles a year and has two pot stills. Now, according to the information I read, there were actually there's actually the possibility to save up to 45% of the energy needed per bottle by using that second distillery. Everything at the very beginning, the grain and so on, gets up to the very, very top, and then gravity works its magic and pulls everything down until finally everything is distilled twice. So but I did not know that they kept the original distillery, that's the thing that was new for me, open. And so you actually have some bottles that come from the one distillery, McMurra, and you have some other bottles that come from a second distillery, the Gravity Distillery. That was very, very new for me. All right, so let's take a smell of this. This is nice. I'm not a great fan of McMurra. Well, I am a fan of McMurra, but I don't like their whiskeys all the time. They have a lot of very funky, little freaky type of um, wine cask experiments. As I mentioned, the Burke wine. Burke tree, Burke wine, what in the world is that? And that's what they used here. And actually, 
Well done. Uh, the nose is a creamy type of vanilla, um, like an apple, a baked apple with a little bit of cinnamon in there. And there's even a little bit, and this is the weird part for me the whole time. I get like, I get uh, the sauce hollandaise, that creamy type of um, buttery type of sauce you put on your cauliflower or in your asparagus and so on and that's what i got when i it's all in there all conclude but it's just so hard it just harmonizes it's so cohesive it's so just almost perfect it's a very very nice whiskey i'm getting more of that baked apple in there i i like it i'm amazed i wasn't expecting that to be honest all right, let's try it. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is actually a whiskey. Oh, even that. Mm -hmm. Very nice. It starts off a little non-descriptive. But then the fruity notes kick in. Those pears, those baked apples a little bit of a current like a white current then the alcohol just supports everything complements everything the wood is a little bit there and i do not know how burk wine tastes but something's in there that just unifies everything it just pulls it up even now the long lasting finish is um is a tail tie uh, is a tie is a, is a um tail is a is evidence of a very well made whiskey now this is a no age statement this is part of the moment series bottles like look great limited release one time one batch thing next year something new even three or four times during the year something new usually they do one in the winter one in the spring one in the summer and one in the fall or even maybe two and so um, when these 4,111 bottles are gone, that's it. Nothing else will ever happen again like that unless they decide to have another cooperation where they pick out another 20 or 19 casks and do it again. This is actually a solid B in my book. This is very, very, very nice whiskey. Now, what's not very, very nice is the price tag of up to $150, 120 euros. I just think that's unbelievable. That's just way too much. So I'm going to actually give this a C minus minus for my value for money. I cannot highly recommend it. I cannot recommend spending that money on this whiskey. What I do want to recommend is, excuse me, um, go to a whiskey fair where you can find McMurra, probably someplace only in Europe and probably someplace only in, <laughs> in Germany, to be honest. They're very, very active here and say, hey, Whiskey Jason said, I have to try the F, um, F, um, F, uh, F, uh, Eva, 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 and um, take a look at the Eva whiskey and say if you like it or not, and I'm pretty sure you're going to like it. I'm pretty sure you're not going to buy a bottle for 110, 120 euros, but it's a pretty good whiskey for that. For what's coming out of Sweden, from what's coming out of McMurra, I must admit I'm more than pleased and a little bit pleasantly surprised on top of that question of the day what types of whiskey sorry once again what type of wines do you know that are not made from grapes for example in sweden they have cherry wine for example in sweden they have birk birk wine from the birk birch birch i'm doing the german pronunciation i'm sorry they have birch wine um, they have also um, some type of mulled wine, which is basically still a, a normal wine that's just been spiced up. But what type of wines do you know um, that are not from cherries? Hmm. That's the question of the day. I want to expand my knowledge. I want to learn from the community. Help me to figure out what type of wines are out there that probably have been spent some time in some type of wood oak barrels and that we can further on use then for whiskey. Thank you very much for watching.
liking, subscribing, telling others about this crazy American over in Germany tasting whiskey you'll probably never see, let alone try. Okay, all the best for you. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, my videos come out. Bye-bye.